Let's review intermolecular forces, or IMFs. These are attractive forces that exist between molecules that cause the molecules to adhere to each other or stick together. And as organic chemists, we're particularly interested in IMFs because they help us understand boiling and melting points, the temperature at which a molecule boils and the temperature at which a molecule melts. These are both, melting and boiling points, are both important um, parts of characterization or identification of molecules in the lab. So for the molecules that we work with in organic chemistry, there are three intermolecular forces that are more important than all the others. They are the London dispersion forces. Sometimes these are just referred to as dispersion forces. The second intermolecular force that's important to us is the dipole-dipole force. And then the third is the hydrogen bond. And I want to remind you, because I'm going to put quotation marks around this, that the hydrogen bond is not a bond in the chemist's sense of the word. And there is no actual connection between the two molecules that are hydrogen bonding together. The hydrogen bond really is just an attractive force. So these are listed, the way that I put them here, they are, they are listed in order of increasing strength. So the London dispersion force is the weakest of these three, and the hydrogen bond is the strongest of these three, with the dipole-dipole force being in the middle. The London dispersion force exists between molecules that are nonpolar. So this would be a force that we would see between two nonpolar molecules. And for us as organic chemists, that usually means that we're looking at molecules that are just carbons and hydrogens with no or very few other atoms in the molecule. So what you're looking at here, this is an example of a molecule because it's just carbons and hydrogens. This is an example of a molecule that would only experience London dispersion forces, so very weak intermolecular forces for this molecule. The dipole-dipole force is one that exists between two molecules that have some sort of polar bond or inductive effect, partial positive and partial negative charges on the atoms. So um, for example, in this molecule right here, which is capable of exhibiting dipole-dipole, we have a couple of bonds that have a lot of induction going on due to the electronegativity difference between oxygen and carbon. So on this molecule, we're going to see partial negative charges on its oxygen and partial positive charges on the carbons that are bonded to that oxygen due to induction in those particular bonds. And these partial charges allows this particular molecule to be polar and to exhibit the dipole-dipole force. So this type of force we're going to see between um, molecules that have oxygen or nitrogen or halogens, some sort of electronegative atom in there. The hydrogen bond exists between two molecules uh, and these two molecules have to have special bonding 
um, situations within the molecules. So they have to have OH, which we see in this example right here, and I'm representing with this notation, OH, with OH or NH, which we're not looking at an example of that, but you can imagine if this was a nitrogen instead, then we would be able to, you could kind of visualize what that would be like. You also learned in general chemistry that FH is included in the mix, but we don't deal with molecules that have fluorine hydrogen bonds, so we don't have to include that on our list anymore. Um, and so in the hydrogen bonding situation, you have to have not just an oxygen, but an oxygen with a hydrogen attached to it. Um, so over here, where we have an oxygen, but there's no hydrogen attached to it, this molecule is not capable of hydrogen bonding. So in terms of how this affects the boiling point or the melting point of these molecules, these three together, um, if we're going to be talking about comparing boiling or melting points, intermolecular forces is only one of the variables that affects boiling or melting point. Molecular weight is the other variable that affects it. So whenever I'm comparing boiling or melting points, I always try to choose molecules that have relatively similar molecular weights. So for these molecules, I've got them... Um, to actually have identical molecular weights. They all have molecular weights of 86, which is why I picked them. And so we know since they all have the exact same mass, any differences in their belt, uh, boiling point is going to be only due to the intermolecular forces that they're experiencing. The first molecule on the left, its boiling point is 69 degrees Celsius. The molecule in the middle, we would predict to have a higher boiling point because it has the dipole-dipole force in it, and its boiling point is 88 degrees Celsius. And then our last molecule, um, this molecule, I'm going to do something to kind of highlight the hydrogen bonding that's going on in this molecule. Maybe draw a box around it that's better than stars. This molecule, because it has hydrogen bonding, we would expect it to have the highest boiling point out of all, and its boiling point is 139 degrees Celsius.